If you've lived beyond the age of 12, no doubt you've noticed how often life calls upon you to multiply by seven and a half. But how do we do it? If we've got 18 times seven and a half, what's the best strategy? One way is to just use the distributive property to break this down a little bit. 18 times seven and a half, of course, is the same as 18 times seven plus one half. If we do it like this, then we just have to think about 18 times 7, and then separately do 18 times 1 half, and then just add them together. And that multiplication isn't all too difficult. 18 times 7, we can think about that as 10 times 7, which is 70, plus 8 times 7. 8 times 7 is 56, and so when we add that to 70, we get 126. And then we just have to do 18 times a half, and so that ends up being plus 9. Final answer then is 135, and another multiplication by 7 and a half has successfully been conquered. However, I intend to change your life, for there is an easier way. Think about it like this. What is 10 divided by 4? Well, certainly it is 2 and a half, or 2.5. But what's 2.5 away from 10? Turns out it's 7.5. 10 minus 2.5 is 7.5, or 7.5. And it's important to note that 2.5 is just a fourth of 10. So said differently, 10 minus a fourth of 10 is seven and a half. So if we want to multiply something by seven and a half, all we really need to do is multiply it by 10 and then take away a fourth. If we do that, it's just like multiplying by seven and a half. Going back to the example of 18 times seven and a half, a very quick way to do this is to just say, well, 18 times 10 is 180 and a fourth of 180 is 45. So just subtract 45 and thus our final answer is 135. You can actually subtract the fourth before the multiplication by 10 or after the multiplication by 10, whichever you prefer. In some cases like this one, I may prefer to take a fourth away first. I know that a fourth of 24 is six. So if I subtract six from 24, well, I get 18 and then I just multiply that by 10. Final answer, 180. This works, of course, because if you take a fourth away from something, then you're left with 0.75 or three fourths of that thing. And when you multiply that by 10, that just gets you to 7.5 or seven and a half. And so in the end, we've multiplied by seven and a half. Let's try a couple more quick examples. 40 times seven and a half, what's that? Well, take a fourth away from 40, that gets us to 30 times 10 is 300. What about 280 times seven and a half? Well, a fourth of 280 is 70, take 70 away and it's 210, multiply that by 10 and it's 2100. What about 1216 times seven and a half? To figure out a fourth of this maybe takes just a little bit more thought. A fourth of 1200 is 300 and a fourth of 16 is four. So a fourth of this is 304. We need to take that away and then multiply by 10. 1216 minus 304 is 912. And then we just multiply that by 10. So 9,120. But with this same logic, we actually get a two for one. Because remember, we said that 10 was two and a half away from 7.5. And that's why this works the way it does. However, 10 is also two and a half away from 12.5. So we can use this same type of strategy to multiply by 12.5, except instead of subtracting a fourth, we just need to add a fourth. What's 40 times 12.5? Well, taking a fourth of 40 is 10, add that to it, so 50, multiply by 10, 500. What's 280 times 12.5? Well, I know a fourth of 280 is 70, so let's add a fourth. That gets us to 350. Multiply by 10, 3,500. And what about 1216 times 12.5? Well, a fourth of 1216 is 304, so add the fourth to this. That gives us 1520. Multiply by 10, and we get 
15,200. Now, of course, this is a trick that's handy to be aware of, but it doesn't always work so nicely. I mean, if we just take a number like 4,234 that I haven't specifically chosen to make the trick work pretty easily, it still does take some thought. It may take a moment to figure out what a fourth of this is. In this case, it's 1,000, and then a fourth of 200 is 50, so 1,050. And then what's a fourth of 34? Four. Well, 8 goes into 32 four times, and there's 2 left over, so then I guess a fourth of 34 would be 8.5. So in total, the fourth would be 1,058.5. Then we would need to subtract these numbers, which is also not trivial to figure out. With a minute's thought, I can figure out that this is 3,175.5, but there's certainly room for error there, and it isn't the easiest thing in the world. I might even want to just revert to paper and pencil to figure it out. Regardless, once I figure it out, I can multiply by 10 and get my answer of 31,755. This is a problem where you may prefer to multiply by 10 first, and then do the subtraction by a fourth, because if you multiply by 10 first, First, you'll have a nice multiple of four that you're working with. So that's the trick. It's not a magic button, but it can lead to some really snappy solutions when the numbers work out okay. Frankly, for me personally, I'm not convinced that using this trick would generally be quicker or more accurate reliably than just doing it the way I typically would in my head, which would be to multiply by seven and then add a half. I mean, 18 times seven plus a half is quite easy easy to do in your head if you just multiply by 7 and then multiply by 1 half and of course have put in some time to practicing your multiplication. Particularly when using this trick for 7 and a half where the subtraction is involved, that can get a bit tricky to do without writing stuff down. Multiplying by 12 and a half avoids that, you're just doing addition, and so that is pretty easy, but the subtraction can definitely get messy. As a final test, I'm going to try generating some three digit numbers to multiply by seven and a half in my head the way I normally would. We'll see how long it takes and if I even get them right, and then we'll try doing it with the trick and compare. All right, let's try generating a three digit number to multiply by seven and a half mentally. We got 586, so I'll jot that down. 86 times seven and a half, and I'll do this in my head. 3,500, 3,500, 3,500, 4,160, 4,160, 4,202, 4,452, 4,452, 4,492, 4,495, 4,495. That is my answer. Let me check if I got it right. I did not get it right. I was off by 100. All right, let's try again. And for our second number, we have 843. Ugh, okay, multiply this by seven and a half. 843 times seven and a half in my head. Here we go. 5,600, 5,600, 5,600, 5,800, 5,880, 5,000. 901, 5901, 6301, 6321, 6322 6322.5. That is my final answer. All right, we got that one correct. Let's try one more. Here we go for our last three digit number. We have. Ah, 115, perfect, nice and easy. 115 times seven and a half. So for this guy, we've got 700, um, 700, 770, 805, 855, 862 and a half, 862 and a half. I tried to rush that one. Let's see, is it right? All right, that one is correct. Let's try a few now with the trick. All right, let's get our first three digit number for the trick, 960. I think the trick is definitely gonna help here. All right, 960 times seven and a half. I'll just multiply this by 10 first, so 9,600. What is a fourth of 9,600? Well, that would be, let's see, a fourth of 1,000 is 250. We need nine of those, so 2,250, and then a fourth of 600, 2,250, 2,250, 2,300. 350, 2,400 is a fourth. 
Um, I could have done that a lot faster. And then the subtraction gives us 7,200. That is correct. I feel it was pretty poorly done. Let's try again. Hopefully give this trick a fair shot. For our second number, we have 900. Oh, that's so similar. Let's just do a different one. Uh, 662. Okay, 662. Again, I'm going to multiply this guy by 10 and then take away a fourth of that. Multiplying by 10 gives us 6,620. What is a fourth of 6,620? Uh, well, that would be, let's see, 250, um, 1,750, 1,750, 1,875, 1,875, 1,800. Um, 1,880, I think, 1,880. And then if we do the subtraction, it is going to be, let's see, 5,740. I don't know how I feel about that. That is wrong. I screwed my division way up. This should have been 1655. So at least for me, this is where the trick sort of falls apart is that in general, finding a fourth of something is just not trivial. I find juggling the numbers in my head the standard way uh, much easier. But we're gonna try busting out one more, one more three digit number. We've got 242 times seven and a half. 242 times seven and a half. A fourth of 242 is just 60.5. So if we just take away 60.5, then we're going to get, uh, let's see, 180, uh, 181.5. So 181.5 times 10, it's going to be 1,815, I think. All right, that one was correct too. So two for three with both both methods. I don't know what the times are. You'll see it in the uh, edited video. I think I was quicker in my head, but I'm not sure. I was definitely more confident in my head. This for me felt really clunky. So let me know what you think about the trick. Be curious to hear your thoughts. I think it's a little bit more consistently easy with 12.5 because you don't have to do any subtraction, but the subtraction with the 7.5 situation along with cutting something into fourths just is a bit of a challenge depending on the number. So your results may vary with this trick, but hey, it's a handy thing to have in your toolkit because depending on the number, you could get the calculation done pretty much instantly. I'll leave you with that. Be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. Words and just how I say shit and Let me speak my poetry to your face It's not in the mid if you ain't listening Not infinite if you ain't really in the